Just like functions and sequences, Mathematica can handle series easily as well. And so I'm going to show you some examples here. The first one is we want to calculate the first 10 terms of the partial sum sequence of this series. And we want to figure out does this appear to converge or diverge based off that. And so the series I have is negative uh, 1 to the n minus 1 power over n factorial n going from 1 to infinity. Okay, so now the partial sum sequence, you got to remember what does that mean? That means the these are the finite sums. Let's call it a sub n. And that's negative 1 to the n minus 1 power all over n factorial. If I did a table of just these values, that would just be a sequence. That's not a partial sum sequence. That's not a series at all. To do a partial sum, we could do something like this. a sub 1 plus a sub 2. There is a partial sum going out two terms. Um, to do this in a better way, I could use the sum function of a sub n, n going from 1 to, let's say, 10. What is this? This is the 10th element in the partial sum sequence. All right, now we got fractions here, so to get decimals, something we can work with a little easier, let's just put the numeric function around when we define a, so now I should get a decimal value. Okay, so what I want to know is the first 10 terms of the partial sum sequence. I want to know, this is the 10th term in that sequence. I want to know the first 10 terms. Okay, so why don't we make a new function that I call b sub n, and the b sub n is going to be the sum of a sub k, k going from 1 to n. Does this make sense? This here I'm defining b sub n to be the sum going from of these terms going from 1 to n. So in other words, the first one plus the second one all the way up to the nth one. All right, so for example, if I say b sub 10, I should get that same value that I got in output 13 right here. So this b sub n now is a sequence of partial sums. This is my partial sum sequence. So if I want to calculate the first 10 terms of that, I'm just going to say table b sub n, n going from 1 to 10. And there they are. There's my first 10 terms. To make it look nicer, I'm going to use table form around my table of ordered pairs n b sub n. That's so I can tell how deep into the sequence I've gone. n going from 1 to 10. And there it is. See, my second term is 0.5 and so on. These are the first 10 terms of the partial sum sequence. Now, based off the first 10 terms, does it appear that we have a convergent or divergent series? Well, it looks like we're kind of slowing down. How could I justify that or how could I visualize that? Why don't, instead of doing table form, we do list plot. So if I did a list plot of my table, I can get a good visualization of what this sequence is looking like. And it looks like it's kind of narrowing out somewhere around this 0.6321. Um, and to get a better picture of that, I can go deeper into the partial sum sequence. So if I do the first 50 terms, yeah, that definitely looks like it's converging. Okay, now the question didn't ask for this, but we could actually just take the limit of the b sub n sequence, the partial sum sequence, and let's let n go to infinity. So this will actually evaluate our infinite sum. And so here you see we get that 0.632121, and Mathematica actually wrote this as a complex number, but notice the complex number is 0, so it's actually this real number, 0.632121, okay, which is about what we expected. We could have initially said sum of a sub n, right, a sub n, remember, were, were my sum ands going from 1 to infinity, and Mathematica can handle this as well, and we get that same limit point. Okay, so we could have done that at the beginning, but what we want to do is get a good understanding of what we mean by the partial sum sequence. So this b sub n sequence, and how that limits out to something, and you can visualize that with a list plot. All right, let's look at this other example. Okay, for the second example, we're going to find the first 10 partial sums of this series, 12 over negative 5 of the n, add it up. And we're going to graph both the sequence of terms and partial sums in the same window. And does it appear to be convergent? Okay, so what we need to do now is plot just the sequence of terms, the sum ands, and the partial sums. And so I went ahead and defined two functions, c to be the numeric value of the sum ands, 12 over negative 5 of the n, and d to be the summation of these 
summands going from the first one to the nth one. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a list plot of my C values. And of course, don't forget to put table around this. Right, we have to calculate a table of points. And there it is. Okay, there's my list plot. The next thing I'm going to do is do a list plot of my partial sum sequence, which is the DNN function. So there it is. Okay, and so notice these are all down around the negative 2 range. All right, now what I want to do, though, is graph these on the same window. So how do I do that? So let's call this first one uh, plot 1. And we'll call this second one plot 2. Then what I can do here, and actually let's put a semicolon to suppress these outputs, because I don't really want to see them individually. I want to see them together. I'm going to use the show function and do plot1, plot2, and this should show both of them together. Okay, so now notice, this is just showing the CNN function. Remember the DE function was down in the negative two range, so to fix that, I'm gonna use plot range, and I'm gonna create a list, and the list is a list of X values, so my X's are gonna go from zero to 10, and my Y values, let's go from like negative 2.5 up to 0.5. I think that's going to cover both data sets if I do that. So I'm going to hit Shift Enter. There they are. This top one again is the summands. The bottom one is the partial sum sequence. Does it appear to converge? All right. So the, at first you may want to look at the summands and say yes, the summands are converging, but we're not looking at the summands for convergence, right? We're looking at the series, the partial sums. But it does look like the partial sums are converging around two. To verify that, all I have to do is say Let's just do the sum of 12 divided by negative 5 to the n, n going from 1 to infinity. There it is, negative 2. Exactly what we see in the graph. So why didn't we just do this at the beginning, this sum function? It's because we want to get a good understanding of what we mean by a partial sum sequence and how that compares to the sequence itself and how we can visualize convergence. I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions on dealing with series, I'd be glad to help. Thank you for watching.